Chapter 095 Betray of Ayers was a frustrating part of the time loop mystery for Zoyan. The fact that he had been deliberately erased from Zack's mind and that he started each restart dead made him a strong suspect for the real identity of Red Robe. However, that raised the question of how Veyers had managed to become a permanent looper. It couldn't have been through the method Zoyan had used everything he and Zack knew indicated that had been pure luck, and that deliberately replicating it would be both hard and dangerous. Zoyan's conversation with Panaxith had fully convinced Zoyan that Zack was the original controller of the loop, so Red Robe must have come later. That meant he had probably become a looper through the temporary marker given by the Imperial Crown, which meant that he had only had six months to figure out a way to permanently join the time loop. Did Veyers really possess the skills necessary to pull that off? He was just an inexperienced teenager. He had a crippling condition that made his magic and personality unstable. He was not considered a social genius or a magic prodigy, even before his botched ignition ritual. There was no way he could have developed his magic sufficiently to pull it off in mere six months, and organizing a group that could have done so in his stead would have taken considerable amount of social shrewdness. Not to mention that Veyers would have had to do all this while keeping Zack in the dark about everything. Zack wasn't very paranoid, and was probably even less so in the past, but that couldn't have been easy regardless. Still, Zoyan could see how it could have worked. Perhaps Zack had really come to like Veyers for some reason and had done most of the work himself. Perhaps he had brought the other boy into the time loop again and again, figured out a way to stabilize his magic, and helped him advance his skills in the fastest and most convenient manner possible. Perhaps there had even been a time when Zack had gone through the trouble of recruiting Quate Archichel and other soul magic experts in order to figure out a way to crack the secrets of the temporary marker so that he could bring his best pal Veyers permanently into the time loop. In order to be Red Robe, Veyers didn't have to be a resourceful mastermind that achieved what he and Zack could not in just six months, he could have simply been an opportunistic, heartless traitor who stabbed Zack in the back after his fellow time looper had given him everything he could. Dot it was all pure speculation, of course. Concrete answers about Veyers were basically impossible to find inside the time loop. Veyers himself obviously couldn't be questioned, people he was related to knew nothing useful, Zack did not remember anything about the boy, and Red Robe had left the time loop. If there were answers regarding Veyers, they would have to wait until Zoyan had left the time loop. Once he had done so, however, things remained stubbornly unclear. He found out that Red Robe had gone through the trouble of evacuating Veyers and his lawyer friend immediately after crossing over to the real world. That greatly increased the chance that Veyers really was Red Robe in his mind. However, he was then informed by Zack that, in the restarts following his departure, both Zoyan and Silverlack were very much alive. Devoid of any memories of the time loop, but alive. This was very much unlike Veyers, who was dead and soulless at the beginning of every restart. Didn't that basically confirm that Veyers was knocked out of the time loop by the Imperial Dagger and couldn't possibly be Red Robe? Now, all of those questions had a chance of being answered, because Veyers was finally in front of them. They didn't even have to search for him he had just shown up in class, alone and defenseless. Zoyan had to admit, he had been caught completely off guard by the boy's arrival. If this was Red Robe, why would he do this? If this was the original Veyers, why would Red Robe allow this? Why, for the love of all that was holy, had Veyers suddenly come here, based on the reactions of everyone around him, Zoyan could see that no one, not even Ilsa, knew the answer to that question. After briefly staring down everyone, Veyers picked an empty spot not far from Zoyan and Briam and sat down. He ignored everyone staring at him and started to unpack his books and writing supplies out of his bag slamming them loudly on the table in front of them in a clear attempt to provoke some kind of reaction Mr. Boranova, what do you think you are doing here? Ilsa finally asked him what, he challenged. I'm attending the class I paid for. Is there a problem? You are no longer a student of this institution Ilsa told him, taking a deep breath and clearly suppressing a sigh. Her voice was tinged with annoyance and she gripped the teaching rod in her hand a little more tightly in her grip. You know this. 
I know no such thing Vayas said immediately, shaking his head and making exaggerated faces at her. My tuition has been paid in full, I passed my first circle certification with flying colors, and I received no notification about any changes in my attendance status. How can I no longer be a student? You attacked people on your disciplinary hearing, Mr. Boranova Ilsa told him. As a result, you were expelled from the academy. You know this, I'm sure of this. Why are you doing this to yourself? That's a lie. I didn't attack anyone Vayas said stubbornly. I lost control over my magic and burned down some furniture. It happens, sometimes. You know this, I'm sure of this. Your institution had no problem taking my money back in the past, even though they were warned this would be the case. I was assured that so long no one was hurt and I paid for any damages, I would be allowed to attend. You have no right to expel me over that incident. It wasn't me who made the decision, so I don't understand why you're telling me this Ilsa told him. She didn't look particularly sympathetic towards him, and probably didn't really believe him much either. Make a complaint to the Academy's legal department if you feel you were wronged. Well, I will. Vayas exclaimed. And in the meantime, I will continue to attend the classes I paid for. Zoyan looked in disbelief as Vayas continued to argue with Ilsa over his expulsion and right to attend classes. He found the entire situation surreal. It was obvious this Vayas wasn't red robe. He paid no special attention to Zak and Zoyan, his mind and soul were largely unprotected, and his awful, confrontational attitude was exactly as Zoyan remembered it. This was the original Vayas, untouched by the time loop for better or for worse. Why would Red Rope allow this? He had specifically evacuated the original Vayas from his friend's house at the start of the restart. Zoyan had fully expected Vayas to have been taken to some secure place, far away from danger. Why would Red Rope go through all that trouble and then just let the original Vayas come to class and make a scene? It didn't make sense, Zoyan could try to search for answers by digging around in Vayas's mind but the boy did have some basic protection from mental tampering. He was wearing a pendant with a big green marble embedded in it it was projecting a mental shield around Vayas's mind and would start screeching and glowing if that barrier was broken or tampered with. Zoyan had seen such pendants before. The shield they created was easy to break, but the alarm on them was sufficiently trigger-happy that he couldn't bypass it quietly. He would cause a scene almost as big as Vayas as if he mentally assaulted him in the middle of class while he was wearing that dot not that this would stop Zoyan for long, of course. He just needed to pick the right moment and everything would be over in seconds. The only thing that worried him was that he suspected Vayas to be some kind of trap by Red Robe. Did the boy have some kind of trap placed inside his mind, waiting to be triggered by a careless mind reader? Was there someone spying on Vayas, ready to report them to the authorities when they were caught attacking him? He started covertly scouting their surroundings while watching Vayas get increasingly agitated as he argued with Ilsa. The rest of the classmates were also starting to get restless, muttering to each other in increasingly loud voices. Few of them saw Vayas's actions in positive light, which no doubt made him even angrier, must give me back the money I paid for this. Vayas shouted, banging his hand against the desk for emphasis. It's disgusting and shameless in the extreme that you're trying to claim my tuition after expelling me. How brazen and corrupt can you be? I could say the same thing about you, Mr. Boranova. How shameless do you have to be to make this kind of display here and disrupt my class like this? Ilsa said in a tone that was calmer and more dignified than Vayas's, but still noticeably heated. If you have complaints about money, go speak to the headmaster or the accounting office. I am not in charge of handling student money and I am not familiar with the particulars of your case. All I know is that you have been expelled and that you are wasting everyone's time here with your antics. Please leave. Make me Vayas challenged. His orange eyes light up with a fiery glow and a notebook he placed on the table ignited and burst into flames. Evidently Red Robe didn't bother to fix his botched ignition ritual make me he repeated angrily. I'll burn this whole place down, I swear. 
Vez, Ilsa said, pushing her glasses upwards to massage her eyes in frustration. This was the first time she was calling him by his first name. Why must you do this? Don't you realize you're just shooting yourself in the foot? If you really plan to take the academy to court over this, behaving like this will only give them more ammunition. Trigma, no. Briam suddenly yelled. It was useless. Trigma, his fire drake familiar, had been completely infuriated by Veyas for some time already. Now that Veyas had lost control over his powers and started burning things, the fire drake decided it was done passively waiting for this threat to come to him and his master. With a fearsome battle screech, the fire drake ripped itself away from Briam's desperate attempts to hold him back and leapt over the tables. It crashed into Vaza's table, scattering books in all directions, and hissed menacingly at the orange-eyed boy. Swearing loudly, Vaz hurriedly pushed himself from his desk, fell on his ass in his hurry to evade the fire drake, and then erupted into a short-ranged fireball centered on himself. Undaunted, the fire drake took the flames head-on and added his own fire breath to the blaze. The entire class started screaming and scrambled to get out of the classroom and away from the burning. Battlefield. Well, Zack and Zoyan remained calm and collected. They each picked one end of the classroom and subtly protected their classmates from harm by channeling the flames away from them through invisible force fields and chilling spells. Aside from them, only Briam and Ilsa did not try to escape the place. Briam was desperately trying to rein his familiar in and drag him off from the fight while Ilsa did her best to keep the fire contained and tried to restrain Veyas and the fire drake in order to stop the fight. Ilsa would have normally realized that Zack and Zoyan had something to do with the surprising tendency of the flames to swerve away from the students or lose power before they reached them, but Zoyan was using some light mind magic to draw her attention away from that. It wasn't particularly difficult, since there was a big, eye-catching battle in progress, and that attracted most of her attention anyway. Of course, the fact Vayas and Briam's fire drake were throwing fire everywhere and that everyone was making a huge racket in their attempt to vacate the classroom meant this was a perfect opportunity for Zoyan to covertly disable Vayas's pendant and invade his mind. He shared a silent look with Zack, who simply nodded at him. In the next moment, they both struck. Zack wrapped the pendant in an illusion that made it appear inert no matter what was happening while Zoyan pierced the mental barrier it created and started reading Vaza's mind and subverting his will. Eventually, Ilsa managed to separate the two combatants, aided in no small part by Zoyan mentally forcing them both to back down. Briam immediately dragged off his familiar away from Vaz, calming the fire drake down and inspecting him to see if he got hurt in the fight. As for Vaz, he simply collapsed unconscious all of a sudden. Zoyan found it easier to memory search people when they were not mentally struggling against him all the time, and he had already gotten everything he could have out of his surface thoughts alone. He was just about to convince Ilsa to let him and Zack carry Vayas off to a hospital or something when she suddenly spoke up. You two, have you been here all this time? She asked, glancing towards Zack and Zoyan. Yes, Zack confirmed. We know some basic spells so we stayed to see if we could help somehow. A bit reckless, but commendable Ilsa said. Unfortunately, no good deed goes unpunished in this world. I need some uninvolved witnesses when I speak to the headmaster about this, and since you were here from start to finish, you fit the bill perfectly. You'll be coming with me after I clean up the classroom. Zack and Zoyan shared a look before lightly shrugging at each other. This was perfect, really they got to stay close to Vayas for quite a while, giving Zoyan plenty of time to rummage through his memories, and they didn't even have to make up some contrived excuse to do so okay Zoyan agreed easily. Ilsa nodded at them, pleased they had no intention of trying to weasel out of it. She conjured a disc of force and levitated Vayas on top of it, before turning towards Briam. Zack took the chance when her back was turned and telekinetically crushed Vayas's mind shield pendant into scrap. It gave off one final ear-piercing screech and a flash of light, invisible and inaudible through the illusion Zack placed on it earlier, and then went completely inert Briam, you and your familiar are coming along as well she told him this. Teacher, I don't know what came into him. I stammered Briam, 
clutching the fire drake in his arms tighter to his chest. Trigmar had largely calmed down at this point, increasingly aware that his master was not happy with what he had done I understand Ilsa sighed. I don't think you will receive a serious punishment, especially since Veyas is the other involved party. You really need to keep a better grip on your fire drake, however. Veyas started things, but this isn't a good look for you, either. Yes he nodded quickly let's go, then Ilsa said. Gesturing towards the door. She strode off towards the headmaster's office, followed by Zack and Zoyan, Briam and his fire drake, and an unconscious Veyas on a floating ectoplasmic disc. She found Akoha and a number of other students waiting outside the classroom door, curious to see the resolution of the incident, and promptly recruited some of them as additional witnesses before telling the rest the class was cancelled for the day and that they were free to go. Zoyan handed off his body to the mind of a distant simulacrum before focusing all of his attention on the memories locked inside Veyaz's head. Break so, were you the one who pushed Priam's Drake into doing that? Zack asked him later no, that was completely spontaneous Zoyan said, shaking his head. I had nothing to do with it. The questioning had lasted for hours, and Veyas had managed to wake up by the end of it. Without any memories of mental tampering, of course. He then yelled out all sorts of threats to everyone in the room and stormed off angrily, thus marking the end of that particular meeting. Zack and Zoyan decided to retreat to Novda Mansion to discuss what happened. What did you get out of Veyas, then? Zack asked. You don't look very excited, so I'm guessing very little. Sort of Zoyan admitted. As you might expect, he doesn't know who Red Robe is. He doesn't even remember what happened when he and his lawyer friend were evacuated at the beginning of the restart that part of his memories was thoroughly erased, and I can't find out anything about it. Of course Zack scoffed. If he knew Red Robe's plans or identity, no way would Red Robe send him to class like this. What was even the point of that, I wonder? This was way too petty to be a legitimate part of Red Robe's master plan. I don't think this is something Red Robe thought up Zoyan said. From what I could glean in Vaza's mind, our former classmate has had this on his mind for quite a while. Long before this month began. Wait, so this is his idea. Zack said incredulously if you could remember Veyas, you'd know this is exactly the sort of thing he would do Zoyan said. He thought his expulsion was unfair and decided to do something about it. I doubt he saw the situation developing as it did, but he definitely came to class with the goal of making a stand against the academy and drawing attention to his case. So this had nothing to do with Red Robe. Zack asked, frowning no. This was just Veyas being Veyas Zoyan answered. In fact, I suspect this was the reason Red Robe wiped out your memories of Veyas when he took a sledgehammer to your mind. What, asked Zack, giving him a shocked look. What do you mean? I don't understand. Veyas probably did this in every single restart while he was still alive Zoyan said come to our first class and start a fight with Briam's fire drake, you mean? Zack asked yeah Zoyan nodded. We always wondered why Red Robe bothered to erase your memories of Veyas, considering you wouldn't normally even interact with him, but if he normally showed up for class to make a scene, it would be very strange for him to suddenly stop coming Zack said, eyes lighting up in realization. If Red Robe is Veyas, he probably didn't want to go through this at the beginning of every restart just to keep up a charade. It's a waste of time, and he probably cringed inside at the thought of what an idiot he used to be. However, him being absent from class would immediately tip me off that something is wrong with him, unless I no longer remember him. That still begs the question, though, why would Red Rope allow Veyas to expose himself like this after going to the trouble of saving him at the start of the month? Zoyan asked we didn't kill him Zack pointed out yes, but how would Red Rope know for sure what we would or would not do to Veyas? Zoyan countered. He was playing with Veyas's life by letting him come here. Plus, even if he scrubbed his memories clean of any sensitive information, he can't know for sure that he didn't leave anything of importance behind. It's just a pointless risk. If I was in Red Robe's place, I'd never let this happen. I'd trap Veyas in a dungeon and sedate him if I had to. 
Does Red Robe even care about the welfare of the original Veyers? I don't know if that logic really holds Zack told him dubiously. You also brought your little sister here, even though you knew this placed her in greater danger. You cared more about fulfilling her wishes than making her perfectly safe. Zoyan made a sour face at that. He hated when Zack was right like that, anyway, even if Red Robe doesn't know what you would do, he does know me, well, presumably. I would never just kill Veyas for no reason, even if he does have some tenuous connection to our opponent. None of this is his fault, really. Does he even have any connection to the cult or the Ibasins? No, that's all Jornak said Zoyan, shaking his head. And Veyas doesn't know about that, either. Right. So there is no reason for us to go after original Veyas Zack said. He's just a dumb kid with no way to threaten us. Killing him would be really petty. We didn't even kill the original Silverlack, even though she could be a real headache if Time Looper Silverlack manages to recruit her to her side. I guess Zoyan said, not really convinced yet. I still think it's very weird. I thought him showing up was maybe some kind of trap, but it doesn't appear this is correct, I put a tracker on him before he left Zack said. If he goes back to Red Robe, he won't Zoyan said, shaking his head. This is Red Robe cutting him off and letting him sink or swim on his own. He'll go either back to his family or maybe to his lawyer friend. Assuming Jornak goes back to his home, that is. They talked about the issue for some time before Zoyan decided it was time to leave. Sadly, another thing cropped up before he had a chance to set off. Placed on the doorstep of Novda Mansion was a simple white envelope addressed to Zak Novda and Zoyan Kaczynski. After thoroughly analyzing it for traps, the two of them opened it and found a letter waiting for them inside. It was just a sheet of normal, non magical paper with a few words scrawled on it in fancy, formal handwriting. Thank you for showing mercy. Perhaps we can come to an agreement after all. Let's talk. You can pick a time and place for the meeting. You know how to contact me. There was no return address, signature, or name of the sender on the letter, but it was obvious who sent it. Just as it was obvious that they couldn't refuse the invitation break it was already late in the evening and Zoyan was slowly making his way to Emiah's place. He wasn't in a hurry. His thoughts were still stuck on the letter they received back at the Novda estate. A meeting with Red Robe, what could the third time traveler want to talk to them about? As far as Zoyan could see, they were completely and unavoidably opposed to each other. There was very little they could agree upon, and they couldn't really trust each other to stick to any such agreement anyway. Especially since Zoyan strongly suspected Red Robe got into the time loop by backstabbing Zack. A person like that couldn't be trusted at all, as he was passing through one of the many Seoria city parks, he suddenly stopped and turned towards the small fountain in the center. He had detected a familiar mental and soul signature in that direction. There was a young woman sitting there, on the edge of the fountain. She was roughly 20 years of age, tall and beautiful, with long black hair and a feminine figure the sort of beauty that made men turn around as they walked and remained stuck in their head for a while. Also, she was completely unfamiliar to Zoyan. He had never seen this woman before in his entire life, he was sure. And yet, she grinned at him cheekily, patting at the spot next to her, as if inviting him to join her. Some of the men around him cast him dark, jealous glances in response. Zoyan ignored the invitation for a second, directing his attention to the roof of a nearby building, where a large raven was inconspicuously sitting and observing the scene below. Zoyan cautiously approached the smiling woman, his expression darkening. When he was closer to her, he stopped. He could feel a ward field spring into existence around them, but he did nothing to stop it. He could immediately recognize it as a basic privacy ward, meant to stop people from listening in on them. Hello, Silverlack, he said. You look much better than you did the last time we talked. Ha ha, you flatterer, she told him. I feel better. My mind is clearer, my bones do not ache, and I no longer get tired as easily. Being young again is everything I hoped for, and more. Is this really what you looked like when you were younger, though? 
Zoyan asked her curiously I have no idea she said with a shrug. I don't have any paintings of myself when I was younger, but I do remember being quite a looker in my younger days. Anyone who could legitimately call me out on this little bit of vanity is long dead, so who cares? Little bit of vanity, Zoyan repeated quietly yes, just a little bit Silverlack said, pretending to adjust her hair while smiling at him brightly. You know, you should try not to frown so much. It will give you wrinkles. You were surprisingly quiet so far Zoyan pointed out. What's up with that? Ah, you know, there's always something she said dismissively. An emergency here, an emergency there, and you suddenly lost two days with nothing to show for it. It's frustrating, but that's life. Indeed said Zoyan glancing to the nearby roof where the raven was intently watching them. I see you got yourself a new familiar. What happened to your old raven? Silverlack stopped smiling at him I guess Panaxith couldn't get him out of the time loop along with you Zoyan continued. That must have hurt. I heard it's not healthy to lose a soul-bonded familiar like that. Especially for witches like yourself. Witches are known for having well-developed familiar-related magic, which probably translates into an even deeper link to their partner animals. Your soul must have suffered considerable damage when you were incarnated into that pretty new body of yours, you know, you have been unusually passive yourself Silverlack remarked. I would have expected you to move faster and bolder than this. I'm guessing your arrival here has not been very smooth either. I guess you could say that Zoyan said. I'm mostly recovered by now, though. What a coincidence. So am I said Silverlack with a happy laugh. She suddenly gave him a serious look. Besides, we both know it isn't my spell work that really worries you and your friend. It's the knowledge I possess about your skills, resources, contacts, and tactics. Zoyan frowned at her weird emphasis on the word friend, but in the end decided not to pursue that for the moment why are you here? Silverlack. Zoyan asked her seriously. Aren't you afraid I'll kill you on the spot? Ha ha. What, you'll attack me in the middle of a crowded park, she said, sweeping her hand to point at the various people milling around them. Some of them were even curiously observing them, unable to hear what they are saying but clearly speculating what two mags like them could be discussing like this it might be worth it to take down a traitor like you Zoyan told her ha. You know, I never told Red Robe most of the information about you that I possess she said. Zoyan frowned at the statement if I die here, however, the dead man's switch I made will activate and everything I know will fall into his lap she said with a triumphant grin. She crossed her legs one over another and threw her head back in a self-satisfied pose. Killing me here would be a very serious mistake. You're a smart, sensible kid, so I know you'll make the right choice. After a few seconds, Zoyan decided she was probably telling the truth. The way Red Robe had been behaving these past few days, it was obvious he lacked the sort of deep knowledge about Zack and Zoyan that he should have had if Silverlack had simply spilled everything immediately all right. I guess you have a point there Zoyan admitted. That still leaves the question of why you came here. You were clearly waiting for me. What do you want? What? Not going to thank me for keeping your secrets. Silverlack complained whatever your reason for doing that, I'm sure it's purely selfish and aimed squarely on maximizing your gains in this. I'm guessing you were trying to pressure Red Robe into making some sort of concession by not handing all the information over to him immediately, but it ultimately doesn't matter. All that matters is that any benefit we get out of this is purely incidental. What is there to thank you for? Zoyan challenged so judgmental Silverlack sighed dramatically. It's because I'm a witch, isn't it? It's always like this, we're only good for making potions and doing people's dirty work, and then it's back to the woods with you, I don't have time for this Zoyan told her, turning to leave. I think I'm going to practice my aim on that raven over there and then go home. There's still time for you to join me, you know. Silverlack called out, not a trace of panic or annoyance in her voice. Zoyan's back remained turned away from her, but he did turn his head towards her to give her an incredulous look. I know I sound stupid to say that, 
Shi began yeah, you do Zoyan confirmed, but I really think you should hear me out she continued. Remember when we were talking about your friend and how weird I made the word sound? Yes. Zoyan confirmed, finally turning around to properly face her that was your cue to ask me what I mean by that, silly boy. Must I draw a picture for you or something? Zack is no friend of people like us. People like us? Zoyan asked. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm sure you know by now that I have entered into a bit of a contract with the primordial trapped in Seoria Silverlax said a death pact to release it by the end of the month or die trying Zoyan said yes, more or less Silverlack agreed. But I'm not the only one who made a death pact. Your friend has also made a death pact. What, that's bullshit Zoyan said. Zack could leave the time loop at any time. Why would he need to make a deal with Panaxith? Not with the primordial, you numbskull Silverlack rolled her eyes at him. With the angels. He made a death pact with the angels to stop the release of the primordial, while making sure no one could find out about the existence of the time loop. Even if he prevents Panaxitha's release, so long as there is even a single person who knows about the time loop by the end of the month, he is going to die. Never mind people who literally originate from the time loop like me and you, even people you tell about the time loop must either die or have their memory erased, or he will not survive this month. Zoyan froze momentarily, his brain stuttering for a second. He fully expected Zack to have some sort of compulsion embedded inside his mind, but this, how do you know this? Zoyan asked her quietly. Did Panaxith tell you this? The primordial cannot directly discuss this Silverlack said. He hinted at it, and Red Rope explained the details of it to me later. I don't know how he knows so much about it, but presumably Zack told him that personally while he still remembered. He could be lying Zoyan pointed out yes, but I don't think he is Silverlack said. She gave him a knowing look. And you probably don't think so either. Zoyan said nothing don't think for a second that Zack doesn't know about this, either Silverlack said. As someone who is laboring under this sort of contract, I can tell you right now that deals with primordials are not that easy to get out of. I already tried to erase my memories to void the contract, and it didn't work. The pact is branded directly into my soul, and I am constantly aware of its terms. I can forget the details of how I got it but not the core contents of it. Zack is the same. Remember how he mysteriously knew he had to find a way to beat the invasion? And how he seemingly foolishly insisted on trying to take it on all on his lonesome? Zoyan still said nothing, though his posture slumped a little in response. In retrospect, there were a number of things about Zack that fit this idea. His strong insistence that he would never use the temporary looper markers, for instance, which always seemed a little strange to his eyes, until he suddenly changed his mind about that dot or the fact that Zack was clearly a very proactive and social person before he started working with Zoyan, but became increasingly passive and even slightly fatalistic once they started working together I understand what you're getting at, but I think you've badly misjudged the situation Zoyan told. Silverlack. I don't think Zack is out to kill me. And I don't think he would have been out to kill you if you had kept your trust in us and helped us make an exit for ourselves. With your help, we could have physically left the loop, laden with knowledge and resources of the time loop. Was it really worth it to give that up just for a chance of a younger body that you would have gotten eventually, anyway? In the end, aren't you and Zack the only ones who successfully left that place? Silverlack challenged, a defiant look on her face. How do you know my presence would have made a difference? You don't. If I stayed, I would have faced extremely low chances of success while working for a person that needs to kill me once we got outside. You can hate me all you want, but I think I made the right choice. HMPH Zoyan scoffed, turning back to leave again. Do you seriously think you can trust Zack, knowing all you do now? 
Silverlack called out more than I can trust you Zoyan responded without turning back. The raven on the nearby roof suddenly took flight and disappeared into the horizon. Behind him, Silverlack shapeshifted into a raven before flying off herself. This time in the opposite direction her familiar went. Well, Zoyan actually strongly suspected that the Silverlack he spoke to was her raven familiar, whereas the raven on the roof had been the real Silverlack. As much as she tried to pretend she didn't fear him attacking her, he felt she wouldn't risk herself so easily. He sped up his pace, putting some distance between himself and the people that were commenting on the spectacle of an attractive woman suddenly shapeshifting into a bird and flying off, before deliberately entering a dark, isolated alley devoid of people. He kept walking for a while before suddenly stopping and turning around. Are you really going to keep following me all the way to Imaya's place like this? He asked. Only silence greeted him. The alley was dark and still, and there was no trace of anyone here beside him. He was stubborn, however, and kept staring at one particular patch of darkness without making any moves. After a full minute of this, he was just about to start throwing magic missiles at the spot when the familiar figure of Zack stepped out of the shadows. Took you long enough, Zoyan said, relaxing a little. But only a little. You've been following me ever since I left the Novda estate, didn't you? Uh, yes Zack admitted. Sorry. I just... I don't know. I had a bad feeling and decided to shadow you in secret. I figured that if I was right, I get to save the day, and if I was just being paranoid, you'd never even know. I guess I overestimated my stealth skills a little. Honestly, if Silverlack didn't put me on guard, it's entirely possible I could have missed you Zoyan admitted. He paused for a second. You heard my conversation with her, didn't you? Zack's shoulders slumped a little so it's true Zoyan said, getting a little angry. Why the hell didn't you tell me? I didn't know the details Zack said defensively. I didn't know I'd made a deal with angels, or even that it was a deal. All I knew was that I have these, instincts, that tell me things. I can't really talk about them, can't or won't. Zoyan asked can't Zack said. I get tongue-tied whenever I try. And if I read your mind to find out. Zoyan asked I will have to kill you Zack told him seriously oh Zoyan said, swallowing heavily. He didn't think he had any chance against Zack, even now. He did have that one trump card that nobody except him knew about, but he needed proper timing to use that, and Zack would probably kill him before he could set it up. Uh, good thing I never tried to forcibly read your mind while you were sleeping or something, yes, very good thing Zack agreed. A short, uncomfortable silence descended on the scene you already decided to die at the end of the month, didn't you? Zoyan asked him. That's why you had gotten so weird and philosophical lately, I don't intend to murder you once this is all done, if that's what you're asking Zack told him. Silverlack is just a black-hearted witch with no understanding of things like basic human decency and personal integrity. If I wanted to survive at all costs, I would have gotten rid of you while we were still in the time loop. I can't believe this, Zoyan muttered. If I had known about this earlier, maybe we could have its divine magic Zack said. We wouldn't have been able to do shit. Just like Silverlack can't get rid of her death pact no matter how hard she tries. She's a witch. They're known for being skilled with gears. You just know she used every trick in the book to try and get out of the contract, but she still failed. So you're okay with just dying at the end of the month. Zoyan asked of course I'm not fine with it. Zack said. It's just, if I have to murder my friends to survive, then what's the point of all this power and knowledge? It's not, it's not how I want to live my life, okay. Damn it, what the hell was my old self thinking to agree to this? Zack slumped against the nearby alley and lightly thumped his head against the wall. What a horrible convoluted mess, Zoyan thought. As if outmaneuvering Red Robe and Silverlack was not enough, he now had to figure out how to keep Zack alive when the end of the month came calling. Sometimes, he thought the gods were still out there, watching him and laughing at his misfortune, 